Hello and welcome to a Wibbly Wobbly episode of On Screen. I'm your host, Dylan Wright, and I'm here to take you on a timey-wimey journey through film and television. Uh, today, I decided I really liked having guests on the show, so you guys don't have to listen to me ramble for five hours. Uh, so I brought along uh, Jess Bonacci and Bethany Wade to talk about a show that we all love and adore, Doctor Who. Guys, thanks so much for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having us. This is great talking about our favorite show with our fellow Whovians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what better way to spend a day than com- than talking about the wonderful world of Doctor Who, especially with season 10 starting just this past weekend. Oh, so exciting. Yeah, it really is. I'm... I. I liked the premiere. We, we all saw it last night. So in case anybody doesn't know, Doctor Who is about this time-traveling uh, alien. He's considered a time lord as his species, who is kind of rogue from his species and aliens. He has two hearts, and he travels through time and space, usually with a companion who is not a time lord. He's usually human, and most of the times is a girl that's in love with him, uh, Stephen Moffat. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just about the adventures of this uh, time-traveling kind of wizard, almost. And it's a really fun premise, and there's a lot of really cool things in that it's not the same actor as the main character. He goes through what's called a regeneration, where um, if an actor is bored with being the doctor or wants to give somebody else a chance, they pass it on to a new thing. The current doctor is an actor named Peter Capaldi, who took over for Matt Smith, and he is currently the 12th incarnation of the character. Which leads me to my first question to you guys. Who's your favorite doctor? Well, this is easy for me. I have to admit that I have only seen a couple episodes of Old Who before it came back with Chris Eccleston in um, 2005. But my favorite doctor from New Who is David Tennant because he is amazing and he is the doctor. (laughs) Bethany, how about you? I agree with that sentiment. David Tennant really brought a lot of charm to the character, and he was funny and silly, but when he needed to get down to business, he was really good with that. However, I actually have seen classic Doctor Who, and Peter Davidson is actually my favorite Doctor number five. Yep, the fifth Doctor. Yeah, he really does do a similar style, but I feel like like he just really like on a dime can swap between being serious and being funny, which I just love that kind of Doctor mm-hmm. style. Yeah, I, I have to agree. Ten is probably my favorite as well. All around, um, everyone loves David Tennant. He's so good with his facial expressions. Yes. Like, I love, you could tell when he's angry. He just grits his teeth, and you just know that it's yeah. intense, and you know um, that the doctor is serious. He reminds you that he's an alien. He's not a human. And just seeing him react, like his reactions change from just elation to pure anger, it, it kind of reminds you that he's not of this world. And... He has very real emotions that uh, sometimes can be polarizing to people. He can be intimidating in one moment. He can be like a father figure in another moment. And then in another moment, he can be like your best friend. And that's what I love so much about his portrayal of it. It's just you get all of these good characters in one person. Yeah, but I love David Tennant. Um, I really do like Peter Capaldi, though, the current Doctor. I think he adds this new kind of energy to the show that's different than Matt Smith and David Tennant. You know, it's a darker kind of uh, more cynical doctor. And uh, as a cynical person, I, I, I kind of appreciate that. <laughs> I I, uh, I think Peter Capaldi, I did not really love him as the doctor in his first season, but I think as the seasons have progressed, he has really grown into his character. And I think with the start of season 10 um, with Capaldi, I think it's going to be a great season because I enjoyed the first episode of the new season. I don't know about you all, but <laughs> I thought it was it was really interesting, just like um, the new companion, too. I think it's going to be an interesting relationship that they have going on. Yeah, you kind of go back to thinking about who Clara Oswald, who, for those who don't know, played by Jenna Coleman, was the l- most recent companion. She is no longer with the show. There's a new companion starting this season. The dynamic between Clara and the Doctor... I was never a big fan of. Like, I liked mm-hmm. her with Eleven, Matt Smith, but when Peter Capaldi took over as a doctor, I was very confused by it. Clara was very much, like, the damsel in distress, the one mm-hmm. who was in love with the doctor, and that uh, dynamic... The one of, of many who was in love with the doctor. Well, yeah, yeah but... let's not forget about <laughs> Martha and Rose. Of course, yeah. but everyone. she... And Amy. It was yeah. very Amy strange also. to yep. see that dynamic continue on Jack, with Captain Peter Jack Capaldi. Harkness. 
<laughs> oh god. Bring we back could talk to an entire show about Jack. Let's They move did on they that. did an entire show about Jack Harkness called Torchwood and it's really good. It is. It is indeed. Yeah, but the companions are a really interesting thing to have on Doctor Who because it kind of they kind of act as a foil almost to the Doctor at some points. They contrast sometimes his like heavy nature um, and bring light to it, or sometimes the opposite, bring a little darkness to a, a jovial Doctor. And um, this new companion, Bill Potts, played by Pearl Mackey, seems like uh, she's gonna kind of uh, almost egg the Doctor on in some of the in some of his adventures. It seems like she's she's really looking forward to traveling with them and uh, seeing where they can go. And I, she seems like she's gonna be a cool companion. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think we saw a small slice of how the season is going to happen in this first episode when they were facing, oh, spoiler alert, they were um, in the Dalek ship and... Um, Spoilers, that's a, that's a reference to another uh, person on the show. <laughs> who, who, oh, just, oh my gosh. Um, I know how you guys feel about River Song. River Song. We're not... Yeah. Love, I it's, love um, River, just like go Missy. Down that road. I think when they were um, facing the Daleks at, towards the end of the first episode we saw that um sort of relationship where bill you can tell that something is going to happen i think during the season where bill is not going to listen to the doctor she's going to do what she wants because she is a very headstrong character um when that m- water monster mm-hmm. type i don't even know what to classify the, the puddle as, monster the puddle yeah. monster that's that's a good one when she uh, thought it was heather and she just touched her hand and the doctor's like no and uh it, it just kind of showed that it's going to be like a sort of butting heads uh pearl mackey as bill is very stubborn she's very comical she is a foil to peter capaldi's very serious doctor bill is very much an instigator for the doctor yeah yeah she really is going to be the one because i mean she was so willing to reach out and then and touch this puddle monster and then even towards the end of the episode she talks about how um, Heather was showing her, like, the fact that she could travel the universe with her. She could give her all these different things. Oh, and a whole new world uh, magic carpet yeah. right on her, yeah. Exactly. Which I feel like is kind of the reason why the Doctor invites her to be the companion, to be to kind of travel the universe with him, because he sees that she really is going to be the one that pushes him to do good things. Because Peter Capaldi's Doctor isn't exactly a good man at heart compared to some of the other portrayals of the doctor yeah it's a very it's a running theme mm-hmm. like am i a good man that's a question that's brought up a couple times in the past couple seasons with capaldi mm-hmm. and i think it's a really interesting uh, way to go and i definitely and with the fact that peter capaldi's doctor ends after the season as well as showrunner stephen moffat i'm really interested. thank god <laughs> I'm really interested to see, are we going to get the answer to that question this season? Are we going to find out if Peter Capaldi's doctor is a good man? Mm -hmm. Especially with Pearl being such an instigating character. Like, is she going to push him to do good things, or is she going to push him to do bad things? Yeah, it's it's definitely a journey that I'm excited to go on. Uh, Who's your favorite companion, everybody? We'll start with Bethany. Oh, boy. (laughs) Can we count Jack as a companion? It's definitely... Played by the great John Barrowman. Oh, what a man. He's amazing. He's um, so hilarious. good that he has his own spinoff show, and that's exactly why yeah, he's Torch the best companion. <laughs> well, yeah. he's, no, he's on Arrow, right? Yeah, he is on Arrow. He is uh, Malcolm Merlin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's so charismatic and brings this just gleeful, boyish energy to the show in a way that it was very interesting to watch. Yeah, Captain Jack is really good. How about you, Jess? Um, I know you're a fan of a, a certain female companion. Yeah, my favorite is, oh, I think, Donna. I Donna love Noble. Donna Noble. Played her, by Catherine Tate. She is. Catherine Tate herself is just Amazing. hilarious. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Donna Noble is so. She's so stubborn. And she. You know what? I think she, uh, Bill kind of reflects a little bit of mm-hmm. Donna yeah, Noble. Yeah, there is that, that questioning of what's going on. Yeah, and, and not it's like, I'm not going to take this from you, Doctor. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you might. What are you doing? Um, that was a really bad accent. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think. Uh, Donna Noble is definitely my favorite. I just love her sass, and I love yep. that she would never back down. She would always stand up for herself. Um, she even went on her own like um, investigation for the episode with uh, the adipose. Oh, oh yeah. And that, that is one of the best scenes ever when they, they see each other, the doctor oh, and Donna, the window, and yeah. they're like communicating purely through like facial expressions and, and hand either, signals. Yeah. And, and Unaware of what's going on. And they know around. exactly what each other is saying, and it's hilarious. Yeah, it's like such a great relationship, and I really hope that's reflected in this new season with Bill being so stubborn and um, just really... Um, 
her own character. She's not just relying on the doctor. She'll think for herself and she'll uh, just be a really strong female lead. And I really want that to happen. Yeah. And at least she won't have a crush on the doctor like every single female lead that Stephen Moffat has written mm. has had a crush on the doctor. Rose is great, though. Rose is a really good audience surrogate to get into the show. Because yeah. if you mm. think about it, the first season of Doctor Who isn't really the doctor's season it's really more about rose and well, like the first episode is yeah rose. The, it's yeah, called so. rose and you don't get introduced to the doctor until like halfway through like you get introduced to this this girl that's working in you know this shop and she wants much more than this provincial life and then all of a sudden she <laughs> okay, randomly gets attacked by mannequins yeah the 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 uh ot, is it the Auto- Auden? Automaton? yeah yeah something like that but Auton's? it was i don't know pretty creepy start but it's it's a great show and it ha- it's lasted for f- over 50 years at this point. Yeah. It just had its mm-hmm. 50th year anniversary, 2012? 13. 13. 2013. And it had the late John Hurt as a heretofore unseen doctor yeah. called the War Doctor. Yeah. We can get into that, but there's a whole story about whether he counts as a number doctor, so technically Peter Capaldi's 13, yeah. or because he's the War Doctor and therefore not a number. No one's numbers are messed up, so Peter Capaldi's still number 12. Yeah. There's a lot of debate about just the numbering of the doctors because... Uh, the series was basically canceled, but it came back in 2005 as a completely new series. And there's like some bridging of the old and the new, and I think it's done really well. There's a lot of really cool references. Like in the season 10, uh, the very first yeah. episode, we get to see the Doctor's granddaughter, who was basically his very first companion in the first episode, where William Hartnell was the, the, the original mm-hmm. Doctor. It, it's really nice that the series respects its roots. Yeah. And uh, speaking of roots, there's nothing more iconic than some of the Doctor Who's villains. What's your what are your favorite recurring enemies of the Doctor? The silence. I'm sorry. Silence uh, is very good. Will fall. It's a uh, it's a species of alien that you basically forget you see them as soon as you look away from them. Yeah, I'll give I got to give Stephen Moffat props cuz that is one of the good things he did yeah. that he Like did I said, he's six. great at he's great at doing monsters. He knows how to like make a scary thing like the weeping angels. Uh, oh really my God. terrifying. Oh. They're they're these uh, aliens that they solidify as you look at them, but whenever you blink or look away, they move super fast and they could they, they could displace you, you in time and or, then they feed off the energy that yeah. could have been or they could uh, break your neck, which is also pretty terrifying. Yeah, it's <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and it's really scary when their faces are uncovered and like they're these like terrifying demon fanged faces yeah. that are mm-hmm. just really scary. And like there's this one episode where it's like this strobe effect, and like you just see them just like they're just coming like right oh, at you. It's yeah, really so scary. Weird. But they're they're another great villain. Um, I know Jess is a fan of the Daleks. Uh, I you know what I think they are terrifying they are so purely evil and i think since they were modeled off of the nazis yeah um i think that it's the whole exterminate thing mm. is is just like yeah it's, it's very real it. yeah, yeah once you kind of realize like where the daleks really came from and what they're based off of i think it's a brilliant villain to create and then the doctor just kind of shows that you know goodness and being a hero will always win over evil. Yeah, um, yeah which I really like because, mm-hmm. I mean, for those who don't know the roots of Doctor Who, Doctor Who originally was started as an educational series. So when the Doctor goes back in time, he teaches history, but then when he goes in the future, he teaches science. Like, they start, that was how it was pitched to the BBC back in 1962. So... I really like the fact that he used the Daleks as a reference to the Nazis, kind of in a way, even though that the Daleks usually appear in the future episodes. Yeah. Because it kind of goes on this idea that history repeats itself, too. Yep, and that was one thing that Moffat almost ruined, again, the Daleks, <laughs> because they, he made them, like, oh, rainbow-colored the and ones. the oh, skittle the Daleks, yeah. yeah. But uh, the, the reappearance of the Daleks in Christopher Eccleston's season, when it's just the lone Dalek, is really yeah. terrifying. And you're thinking, oh, he can't climb stairs. <laughs> and then <laughs> oh, he wait. hovers up. <laughs> and you would think this, like, salt and pepper shaker looking thing, this huge the hulking thing. A plunger. A, plunger. a plunger and this, like, whisk kind of thing wouldn't be terrifying. But, but they really make him kind of scary. And uh, another really great recurring villain is uh, the Master, who is oh, the man. Doctor's Moriarty to uh, his Sherlock Holmes, if you will. Basically, the the mirror image of the Doctor and his goodness, and um, it's a, it's a really interesting dynamic, especially when in the last two seasons they made the Master Missy made her a female, oh, I love which Missy. was a really yeah. cool thing that they should do with the Doctor and make. The Doctor <laughs> female. And the Cybermen are also another really good villain that recurs. They looked stupid at first, but they actually <laughs> yeah, did become kind of terrifying. 
Mm. Yeah, it goes back to that idea of, like, robots taking over everything. Yeah. Because and we are just so pushed to, like, improve ourselves that we're, we're just going to get there one day. I don't know. Yeah, by yeah. completely just, like, essentially taking everything good about ourselves, getting rid of it, and just putting us in a robot body. <laughs> Who needs emotions? The one thing that Doctor Who stresses is the goodness of humanity. Yes. And it always comes back to how great being a human being is and the, the potential of our race. Like, the Doctor's in love with humanity because of how... How much they, they, how far they've come, and how far they still have to go, and it's a really just amazing theme to go on. The Brits really know what they're doing. They they've got it for fifty some years, and I think it's going to keep going. I, I I think it has the it could last the test of time. Absolutely, if you will. it has for fifty years, and I think it could go for fifty more. And now they have the spinoff class too, yep. so that'll be a whole nother thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe that could be a training ground for yeah. companions in the future. And mm-hmm. there's Spin-off. there's been so many spin-offs actually there's been class torchwood yes. uh the sarah jane adventures yeah. mm. um it's it's been a, a really successful franchise that resonates with fans and uh, i i really hope that it keeps going but we are running way over time i want to thank you guys again for being on the show i really appreciate it and thank you all for listening if you have any future suggestions for topics please let me know i would love to cover whatever you'd like me to cover Next week, I might have another group of guests on to talk about a show that's coming back in May, which I'm really excited about. So you'll have to figure out what show that is. It's a mystery, and you'll have to solve the mystery of what show it is before next Thursday. Uh, It's a mystery show. But uh, in the meantime, uh, until next time... Allons-y!